Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. It's a treat day for me because I get to taste two bug bitten oolongs. We're going to talk about this concept of bug bitten teas and we're going to be comparing the very famous Dongfang Mei Ren, aka Oriental Beauty, aka Eastern Beauty, aka Bragger's Tea, aka Bai Hao Oolong, with the less famous but equally powerful aromatics of Gui Fei Oolong. Right, let's dive into this concept of bug bitten teas because I know that there's a, a a fair amount of information and I think some of it needs to be clarified a little bit. First of all, I have in front of me two Dongfang Mei Ren, so you can see here, two Oriental Beauties or Eastern Beauties. We did not find an Eastern Beauty 2020, so these are samples that I received, which are still very high quality samples, but we did not select an Eastern Beauty this year, and I'll get onto the reasons for that in a little bit. And in the middle, we've got our new Oolong here. This is Gui Fei Oolong, aka Honey Concubine. That's what we're calling this one, Honey Concubine Oolong. So let's quickly scope these teas and then we'll dive into the specifics of bug bitten teas. These teas are all from summer 2020, so June 2020. The cultivar are the same, they are from the Qingxin variety. The origin, they're all from Nanto in Taiwan. The picking and processing is where you're going to see the most difference in these teas, so we'll talk about that in a second. Elevation on these teas are around 800 to 1000 meters, so you can see that the scope is almost identical. What are the similarities and differences with picking and processing? Well, first of all, let's deal with the differences. The difference is that this tea is less oxidized than this one. So during the oxidation phase, this tea is oxidized less, which means it's probably left for less time before firing, or the temperature difference in terms of the piling of the leaf is different. Um, also, the picking is different. The picking on uh, the Guifei Oolong or Honey Concubine is more like your classic ball rolled picking, which is why they ball roll it. So larger leaf, sort of medium leaves, waiting for the bud on the plant to disappear before you pick. However, for Dongfang Mei Ren or Bai Hao Oolong, you're looking for four buds in Bai Hao Oolong and generally the highest grade Dongfang Mei Ren, which commands the highest price and is often entered into competitions, looks very bud heavy and looks like it's picked with quite young leaves. So similar in look to this one, this you know has a fair few buds. This has the same amount of buds probably, but you can see that these are younger leaves and you can see that not just by the size of the leaf, but by the fact that they're darker. You can see these lighter orange brown leaves. The reason for that is that when you have larger leaves and you oxidize them, they have a lighter hue to them. They have a more orange, yellow hue to them. And so you can see that these are larger leaf pickings. And as I said, generally, the highest grade Dongfang Mei Ren that is entered into competitions has young leaves and buds. However, I maybe differ from the uh, judges at the Taiwanese Oolong competitions. In my opinion, I actually prefer Dongfang Mei Ren, and hold your ears if you're listening in Taiwan, I actually prefer Dongfang Mei Ren, which has more of this look about it. And if you've purchased uh, Mei Leaf Dongfang Mei Ren or Eastern Beauty, which again, we did not find this year because we did not find a tea which was, uh, that met our standards, you will have noticed that it's more of this look where you're combining buds, some young leaves, and some of these larger leaves. I sort of see uh, Bai Hao Oolong similar to a white tea in that sense, that I like to have this sort of combination of leaf sizes because I think that it adds more sweetness. These larger leaves add more sweetness whilst having this um, uh, very uh, rich terpene quality which comes from the processing, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and the bug bitter nature of these teas. I actually think that having some of those larger leaves adds more of a balance and sweetness to the tea. Whereas when you have very bud heavy and very young leaf Bai Hao Oolong or Dongfang Mei Ren, I think that the flavor profile shifts more in the sort of nutty realm. You still get that, uh, the, the classic aromatics of these bug bitten teas, but it tends to be, in my opinion, masked a little bit by the overly nutty nature of the tea. And if I was gonna want to drink one of those teas, which is very sort of marzipan and nut heavy, I would be more inclined to drink a really high quality fooding silver needle or fooding white tea. That's my personal preference. And as I said, that's not the opinion of the judges at those Taiwanese competitions. So if you're looking for a, 
uh, competition grade Taiwanese Dongfang Mei Ren, you're going to look for something or expect to see something which is a little bit more bud heavy and younger leaves. Right, so those are the differences. Let's talk about the similarities because it's very important to note that the uh, aromatic profile of these teas is not just about bugs. We're going to talk about the bugs in a second. Because of the fact that these teas undergo a harder wither and longer oxidation period, that means that there's more time for as the leaf starts to wilt, as the leaf starts to lose moisture, the cell walls break down and you're getting this mixing of compounds. Specifically, you are getting a mixing of enzymes which are stored within the cell walls of the plant, mixing with glycosides. And we can talk about the, the, the value of glycosides in a second, but glycosides are essentially a sugar bonded with terpenes, which are aromatics. So you take sugar and you take these, these volatile, beautiful ar aromas, you bond them together, that store, that's stored as a glycoside in the vacuole of the plant cells. And when these plant cells start to break down because they're wilting, the enzymes in the cell wall start to combine with these glycosides and they cause a reaction to cause the sugar to get carved off, so you get a sweeter tea, and you get terpene release. These terpenes get released, so you're getting a very ar aromatic tea, and if you ever walk into a wither room, the smell of terpenes is just incredible. And with this uh, tea type, especially I think with this Qingxin cultivar, this very fresh cultivar, you tend to get a release of linalol and geraniol. So these very zesty, floral and fruity aromatics, uh, aromatics which exist in zesty roses, in geranium, in pineapples, in citrus fruits. So very, very bright zestiness. And so the processing style of these teas um, means that you are getting naturally a lot more of this bright aromatic terpenes and sweetness that comes from oxidation and the carving off of these sugars from the glycosides. Then these teas undergo a light roasting. I think it's very important that you roast these teas um, because the roasting stabilizes the aromatics. It stabilizes everything. It means that they can hold it and keep it and you can store it for longer whilst having these aromatics. You may lose a little bit of the top notes of these teas, but the sacrifice is well worth it because you get a much sort of richer, more settled aromatic uh, profile. Right, now let's talk about the bugs. So there are, there's a fair amount of information about bug bitten teas. Um, some of it I think doesn't hold particularly true, um, or at least I should say, I think that the theories may be true, but I don't think that they're the main contributory factors for this bug bitten taste. And the bug bitten taste is a taste which is very honeyed, a honeyed taste which comes from a terpene release called DOD. And that's a precursor for hotrionol. Hotrionol is found in honey, it's also found in elderflowers, it's also found in Gewurztraminer, Muscat and uh, Riesling wine. So these dessert wine honeyed notes and that really is the main characteristic of bug bitten teas. So some of the theories which I have read, which I don't think really are the main contributory factor to this honey-like taste are, well, one of them is that because the leaf is bitten whilst the uh, plant is growing, there's an oxidation process happening um, while the plant is alive. And yeah, that must be true because you know, you're getting damaged. So there's going to be some oxidation, but I don't think that that's going to mean that you're going to get so much of this flavor. Uh, other theories I've, I've heard are that because the plant is bitten, uh, the plant starts to try to repair the leaves. And so sugars are sent up to the leaf or more polyphenols are created in the leaf. Again, probably true, possibly true, but I don't think that that's um, really the reason why you have this taste. And the reason I'm saying that with a fair amount of certainty is because you do not need the entire uh, plant to be bitten by the bugs in order for that taste to be um, present on all of the leaves. And you do not even need all of the plants in the field to be bitten. As long as a, a percentage 
of the plants have been bitten at some point, you tend to have this flavor developing in the whole field. So if it was related to direct biting and this individual plant basically changing the compounds in the leaf or oxidation happening in the leaf, then you would expect there to be very little consistency of flavor within the whole plantation. You'd expect that honey-like note to only be on those leaves specifically that were bitten, or you'd have to let these leaf hoppers or jacids, which are these insects which are famous for creating this honey-like taste, you'd have to let them just basically infest the whole uh, field, the whole plantation. Um, and uh, that is not the case. The truth is that you can have plants producing this bug bitten taste even if they have not been bitten by bugs. And let me explain the theory why. So if one of these jacids or lots of these jacids bite enough of the plants in the field, then the plant starts to create new terpenes. And new terpenes like this DOD are created that um, are designed to repel these insects. And they do this either by literally repelling the insects, so just in the same way as uh, mosquitoes don't really like citronella oil. If you go to a hot country and you put citronella oil, you're less likely to be bitten by mosquitoes. So that citronella-like smell may repel the insects. There are also some theories to suggest that maybe the, the, the terpene release is actually to try to attract predators of these jacids or leafhoppers. So a very clever system of basically calling out um, to the uh, predators to come eat these insects which are attacking the leaves. But also, and crucially, this um, smell, this aromatic release, is also designed as a chemical signaling system to signal to the whole plantation, to the whole field, that there is attack by jacids and to basically tell all of the plants to create these um, compounds, these terpenes. And so in this way, even if you have a small amount of jacids uh, biting the fields in the summer, which is why it is picked in the summer, to allow for more of this bug activity, then just with the natural, very clever chemical signaling system of the plants, the plant is basically informing its other leaves and all the other plants around produce this terpene. Let's produce this terpene because there are insects around. Let's work as a team to try to either drive away these insects or call in the predators. And then what happens is, let's say, um, so the plant has reacted and it's done this over a few years. So it's you know gotten used to making these terpenes. Well, if this bug is no longer around, let's say it's springtime, and the bug is no longer around, uh, there's no need to continue to produce uh, this uh, terpene. So what the plant does is it locks the terpene with a sugar and makes the glycoside, right? So it stores this terpene ready, waiting in the vacuole of the plant, which is why when you go back to the processing and you go through that hard wither phase, you are encouraging more of these terpenes to be released, carved off, and therefore to get this flavor in the tea. And in this way, you can even have years where you do not have hardly any bug biting of the leaves, but just by the natural learnt behavior of previous years of being bitten, by the fact that it stores these terpenes ready in waiting, you can still get this aroma and this taste from plantations that have not been bitten by bugs that year or not in any, you know, relevant uh, proportion. And so this is why I think that the theory of terpene release is much more valid than the direct oxidation or the direct um, sugar or polyphenols uh, reacting in the leaves to direct biting. Okay, so that's the theory of the bug bitten tea. Let me quickly tell you a little bit about the history of Guifei Oolong. Um, Guifei Oolong named after a very famous concubine or consort in the Tang Dynasty called Yang Guifei, um, one of the four beauties of ancient China. Um, the reason why it's called Guifei Oolong supposedly is because this tea is called Dongfang Meiren or Oriental Beauty, supposedly coined by the Queen of England. 
when she tasted it. And so the Taiwanese um, producers wanted to mimic this idea of a beautiful woman. So they looked back at old Chinese history um, and found this uh, Gui, young Guifei, this very famous uh, consort or a concubine. And so they called it Guifei Oolong. This tea was supposedly invented in 1998 in Dongding region after the earthquake. The, the farmers and producers um, had to leave their plantations and returned to find that their plant was bitten by bugs. You always hear these kinds of stories where a mistake basically turned into the discovery of a new tea type. Um, so they'd found that these bugs had bitten and then they processed the tea and they loved the, the aromatics. And so Guifei Oolong was created. Okay, let's dive into it. I think that what I want to do is I want to taste the Guifei honey concubine with what is generally sort of um, on paper considered to be the higher grade Dongfeng Mei Ren. As I said, I don't particularly think that that's the case, but I think it's a, a nice back to back. I haven't tasted this type of Dongfeng Mei Ren in a couple of months, so I think it would be a nice comparison. Let me quickly warm up the Gai Wans here. I've got a tea lifted Gai Wan and a tea drunk Gai Wan. I'm sure a lot of you out there have already tried Dongfeng Mei Ren. Probably many of you have tried Guifei Oolong. Be interested to know your thoughts on the differences between them. Certainly, we should talk about price. And Dongfeng Mei Ren commands a much higher price than Guifei Oolong. Is that price difference justified? Well, let's... Uh, do this tasting and I'll see if I can uh, give you my conclusion on that. Smell of the dry leaf. So very, very clear citronella note, zesty, bright, but then underneath it is a very clear um, marzipan, hazelnuts, marzipan, nuttiness. So you're getting this um, fruit and nut combination. Guifei, very different. Um, so imagine uh, uh, an, uh, the more classic ball rolled Qingxin high mountain oolong aroma, or even a little bit of that Jinshuen um, milky creamy aroma. I've done a video about Jinshuen. You can check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. So take more of that sort of fresh mountain air, uh, creamy milkiness, and then combine it with fruit. So I'm getting more like um, milk and honey with apples, like a um, slightly caramelized apples. The roast on this is light, but you can definitely pick up this caramelization that's happening. So sort of like a tartata, you know, caramelized apples, milk and honey versus a more, I would say, white tea or black tea sort of uh, aromatic profile because of the picking and because of the longer oxidation, I'm getting more nuttiness, more poppy seeds. Yeah, poppy seeds um, in there. Poppy seeds and this sort of citronella fruitiness. So zestier but nuttier, warmer, uh, milkier, um, and the fruit is a little bit more of a sort of a, a baked apple note. But let's see what happens when leaf meets water because then you're gonna get much more of a, a freshness coming out of both of these teas. You may notice that I used visually less leaf for the ball rolled oolong, but that's obviously because it's ball rolled, so it's gonna expand. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these really high grade uh, Dongfang Mei Rens have a very um, interesting profile uh, potency, there's a, there's a, you can feel it on the nose that there's a potency that comes from these younger leaves. Very much reminds me of those um, silver needles from Fuding. I'm getting tons and tons of marzipans and nuts. Um, a little 
bit of a sort of acidic sort of feel on the nose, um, as well as this zestiness, which comes from sort of a plummy, geranium, rosy, lychee sort of um, sweetness. So lychees, rose, geranium combined again with poppy seeds and marzipan. Very nice, but if I had done it with this one, it would be much more, uh, you would notice more of the sweetness um, and less of the nuttiness. Right, here we go, Guayfe. So, a lot more honey um, to my nose. I'm getting honeys, pine forests, like pine uh, wood, no, like the resin, like pine forest resin and honey, forest honey. Um, very, very sweet, much sweeter in smell, yeah, than this one here. They're both incredible smelling, let me just say that. That's why I said it was a treat day. Um, you, can, you can smell that it's made with larger leaves. It has more of a sort of a, a, a slightly more vegetal note there. And what I mean is sort of like a green, alpine green note happening. Um, but it's sweet with the, that pine resin, honey, and like the fruitiness is more in the sort of very sweet, like, like lychees in syrup smell versus uh, this one here. Okay, I'm brewing with 93 degree water. Pour around the outside. I don't want to go direct on this. And I'll wait uh, about 10 seconds before pouring this one. Okay. I'm gonna pour them in identical hammered glass gongdao bays so you can spot the color difference as well. I like to brew these fairly long. Gorgeous, lovely golden liquor. This probably is gonna be a bit lighter because ball rolled oolongs just take longer to open up. But I think that's a fair comparison. Let's let these leaves breathe a little bit. Make sure I don't mix those up. So let's take a little look at the color difference here. Dongfang Mei Ren, you'd expect it to be darker because it's smaller leaves and more oxidized compared with the Guayfei, similar amount of activity going on in the leaves to my eye. All right, let's give them a taste. So, got a lotus cup for my Dongfang Mei Ren, just so I don't mix them all up. These sessions can get a bit messy when you're doing a, a double drop session. Okay, Dongfang Mei Ren, here we go. And texture, and this is one of the things that I find um, I'm very picky about with Dongfang Mei Ren, and one of the reasons why year in, year out, you'll notice that Oriental Beauty or Eastern Beauty sort of jumps into stock and then jumps out of stock um, on our website is because um, I'm very, very particular about what I look for in a Dongfang Mei Ren. And um, the texture can sometimes be a bit thin, and a bit um, flat. And that's the case in this one. It's got um, uh, a good mouthfeel in the sense of, I note that it's young leaves. I note that there's a potency to its mouthfeel. There's a sort of um, uh, a movement and physicality in my mouth, which makes me recognize that it's, you know, high quality young pickings, but it just, um, has a sort of thinness about it and a flatness about it that I note with a fair amount of these uh, Dongfang Mei Rens. The taste is... So, when you combine this um, combination of like citronella, geranium, linalol, and almost like a black tea, like mentholated note to it, those honey notes start to taste 
more in the sort of medicinal honey side. So it has more of a like medicinal note to it. And I personally prefer maybe, you know, that's, you know, the, the desired flavor profile for higher quality Dongfang Mei Ren um, in the competitions. But I personally prefer um, when that honeyed note is combined with more of a fruity, zesty note and it's a little bit maybe uh, more of that straight ahead indulgence versus um, this style which leaving in my mouth with quite a dry sensation it's very active so I understand the sort of quality marker there but that yeah that nuttiness um, and that that liniment mentholatus slightly like eucalyptus note that's coming from the uh, extended oxidation of younger leaves which is very uh, reminiscent of black teas especially black teas from Taiwan combines with um, that nuttiness that comes from the buds and that honeyed note and you start to lose in my opinion the sort of fruity sweetness that I really love from um, a, a Dongfang Mei Ren. Okay very dry in my mouth. Let's see how this Guifei reacts much thicker, uh, much rounder, softer. So if you're looking for a tea with a bit more bite in terms of its sort of dryness and astringency, then one of these small leaf Dongfang Mei Rens would probably be up your alley. Um, if you're looking for something that's a bit softer and smoother, then I would go for something with a little bit more of these sort of larger leaves. Imagine with white tea, you've got those uh, combination of Yinzhen, Bai Mudan and Shoumei and, and, and having a good mix um, pr produces, I think, a, a really uh, rounded mouthfeel. Mm, flavor on it is complex. Let me give you um, the sort of snapshots. So I'm getting um, um, uh, um, an undertone of like cedar wood woodiness, but very, very light undertone, a very fragrant aromatic like incense cedar. And then I'm getting very floral notes like orchid. But then I'm getting a lot of honeyed fruits, like um, that muscatel note, muscat wines. Um, the the mouth feel afterwards is because of the fact that it's made with the medium leaves, not the buds. The the flavor profile is shifting more into that sort of dried fruit, like almost like a traditional style. Tie Guan Yin has this sort of apricot dried apricot note happening. So honeyed apricots, um, uh, orchids, cedar wood, and um, that muscat dessert wine, sweetness and tang. Let's go for another infusion. Let me boost up the uh, temperature of the kettle. So a big difference they're both high quality bug bitten teas. Big difference in price, a lot more affordable. Big difference in texture. But also, even though they both exhibit this honeyed note, that honeyed note seems to be expressed in a different way because of the difference in processing and the difference in picking. There we go, 92. but incredible aromatics jumping off this Gong Fu code. And so it is a treat to, to drink these bug bitten teas. But I just really want to make it clear that, you know, the directness of the bugs actually biting the leaves and therefore it reacting in terms of uh, aromatics and uh, flavor is not the case. You can get plantations which are very, um, which have very little bugs, but because of the history, because of the learnt history of reacting to bugs in this area with these plants, you can get naturally this uh, aromatic buildup um, in the plants. And obviously, if they're bitten by bugs, then that's going to be accentuated 
in that year. And obviously the amount of biting is gonna have an impact as well. So, you know, all of them, all of these factors have an impact, but it's on a spectrum rather than a sort of black and white, did this leaf get bitten by this insect? Yes or no, otherwise it's not gonna have that hot tree and all honeyed note to it. My left-handed guy one skills definitely need practice. I can feel an uncertainty in my paw, which is a uh, reminiscent of uh, the early days. It's a good thing to switch up, brew with your left hand for a while, just to sort of, you know, balance yourself a little bit. Color is still darker in the Dongfang Meiren because of the oxidation. You can see the amount of leaf has exploded with the Guifei. Okay, let's uh, taste this one again. I prefer this infusion. Seems to be more balanced. Um, so I'm still getting that medicinal honeyed note. Um, so it's sort of a little bit more adult. It reminds me a little bit, um, um, you know when you take a, a, a peated whiskey, but try to sort of remove the smokiness of that taste. I know that's a bit strange. And just focus on that slightly more medicinal taste that comes from peated whiskies. A lot of people don't like peated whiskies because it's too smoky. I actually quite like peated whiskies, but um, try to remove the smoke element and just sort of focus on the medicinal notes. But it is very, um, um, balanced. I'm getting a, a slight chocolate undertone to it as well. Again, that black tea uh, flavor profile is coming to the fore because of those younger leaves and those deeper, the deeper oxidation. I'm getting citronellas. I'm getting um, um, a little bit of rosy zestiness um, on the nose as well, um, which again can happen with some of these flowery black teas. <sighs> But that all combines in a really lovely way with that honeyed note and you're getting a, a delightful, delightful, delightful tea. I don't want to um, put it down, but it just is not for me what I'm looking for for uh, my Eastern beauty, which as I said, I'm looking for more of that indulgence, fruits and honey. Mm, great tea though. Right, Guayfei. Oh, so much brighter. Ooh. Um, mm, a lot of that muscat is coming through. Um, like the grape skin, I'm getting, um, because it's larger leaf, I'm getting a little bit of sourness that comes from, imagine if you, you've eaten sweet grapes and you, you have a little bit of the grape skin and it just has a little bit more of a touch of acidity to it which I think plays really well with that honey note. You get the honey and this little flash of sort of grape skin um, acidity. Um, and it leaves the mouth with a very soft, but rounded and long combination of apricots, dried apricots and Orchid, sweet floral orchidness. I, I, orchidness, is that a word? Um, <laughs> orchidity. Um, so yeah, it's got that orchid and honeyed apricot finish to it. It's fruity. And yet, because of that Qingxin variety, it's also fresh and sort of alpine. One more infusion, still hot water. The body sensations on these teas generally are relatively gentle. They're gonna be more gentle with the larger leaf compared with the um, smaller leaf picking of this particular Dongfang Mei Ren. Smaller leaf's teas are gonna have um, more caffeine than larger leaf teas in general. I hate to make these black and whites, but in general. Oh, quick smell of the empty Gong Da Bei. Ah. Now you're really picking up. If it's if it tasted the same as it smelt, then I would have picked this tea. Really, really rich in geranium, elderberries, muscat grapes. Just really, really rich in that aromatic. Ah, oh, totally different. More milky, more honeyed. Like 
like evaporated milk, um, icing sugar, sweeter, milkier, um, less fruity on the empty Gong Dabe, which is really interesting because in the cup, it's definitely more fruity than <laughs> this one here. Always remarkable how the smell of the empty Gong Dabe reveals something different. Getting a real chocolate note as that cools down. Mm. Much brighter, much higher. Um, and that cedar pine resin, it has a sort of spiced, sweet, resinous quality to it. Last infusion, at least last infusion on camera. And I would like to say, please, cold brew these teas. These teas are the perfect teas to cold brew. So you do like four or five infusions, then throw them in some cold water. The flavor profile that you'll get from the cold brewing will bring out all of those top notes in a really big way, much more concentrated because of that extended brewing time. If you wanna know about cold brewing, I'll put a link in the description below. Less of a fan of that third infusion. Nice, but too much of that young leaf woodiness is coming through. Kwefe, mm. definitely a winner. Third infusion, soft, round, honeyed, fruity, zesty, but not the same. So one of the differences I would say is because of the larger leaf picking, if you get an Eastern Beauty, in my opinion, like this one, which has more of a balance with more of these larger leaves, not all big leaf, let me just say, but like a balance, I find that the zestiness level is incomparable. Those citrus fruits, those zesty lemony roses, you know, those very, very, very bright aromatics, I don't think you can find that anywhere else but in a bug-bitten Dongfang Mei Ren. I can smell it on this one, but we still didn't select it because it needs to prove itself over many infusions. The Guifei has more of a rounded character because of its larger leaf picking. It still has those high notes, but I would say they're much more in the sort of fruity notes rather than those sort of zesty um, skins of citrus fruits and zesty roses. It's more of a sort of uh, dessert wine fruitiness, a honeyed apricot fruitiness, and because of the fact that you're having the larger leaf, you're also getting more of the creaminess, more of those lactones, you're getting more creaminess and milkiness. So it's an interesting interplay between creamy, soft, milky, with, with fruity acidity and these dessert wine honey notes. So I hope that this is giving you more information about bug bitten tea and what to look out for when you are selecting teas for your collection. That's it tea heads, check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.